Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. Ellis and Viv, welcome back. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach our final, and today is your final chance. Remind us how you two know each other. Well, she's my mother, and she's a very forgiving mother, cos I think I was absolutely rubbish the last time we appeared, and she's already forgiven me for it. Oh. So she's the best mum in the world. Best mum in the world? You yeah. said he was the best son in the world last time. <laughs> well, I did. Good Lord, this is brilliant. World-beating team we have. Best of luck this afternoon. I hope you, you go a little bit further than round one so this I. time. Welcome to Stephen Ollie. I say Stephen Ollie, Jake and Elwood, possibly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stephen Ollie, uh, where do you two come from? Uh, I'm from Leeds. Ollie's from York. We're both junior football coaches for Monk Fryston Junior Football Club in Leeds. He's the successful coach. I'm the not so successful coach. Jose Mourinho, as you can tell. Yeah, I just said, we, God, I don't think we've had a tie on this show forever. <laughs> <laughs> a tie. Just, well, just... If you're on telly, you've got to make a bit of an effort, I always Yeah, think. Uh, or in court, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're going how, after. How, how did that go, by the way? Was that right? <laughs> the tags were on off. Well, you're here, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing you were let off. Now, a massive welcome to John and Mark. How do you two know each other? We met in a pub shortly after John joined the firm where we both now work and discovered that we both had similar interests in life, including quizzes and... Here we are. And finally, we've got Linda and Jane. How do you two know each other? Jane and I have been friends for nearly 20 years, and we met at a, a Vickers and Tarts party in, uh, in Bexley, where we come from. Can I just be absolutely <laughs> clear about it? That was fancy dress. It wasn't actually... <laughs> <laughs> sort of the local There synod weren't, there and, weren't uh, very many um, vicars, I have to say. There were mostly um, rugby players in women's underwear. Um, and that's when do we realised we had... Do they wear anything else, rugby <laughs> no, players? No, apart often. from when they're playing rugby? Not often. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. It would be quite wrong if we went any further without me introducing my friend with all the facts and figures. My pointless friend, I should say, Richard. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Mm. Great show here. Two very different questions, the first two. Should test a few people. In terms of who's going to win, normally we've got one returning pair, and normally it's a big advantage on this show, but you, you were with us so briefly, <laughs> weren't you? It's almost, like, it's almost like you're new, Ellis. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're an unknown quantity for me. I have to say, Stephen Ollie, we've never, ever had winners in fancy dress before, <laughs> so <laughs> I might pick Stephen Ollie to win today. I've, uh, I've got one right in 16 shows. Today I'm going for my second. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, our players need to score as few points as they can. And they do that by seeking out those little-known answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's looking to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. The jackpot, incidentally, hasn't been won for the last three shows, and we add another £1,000 to it. So today's jackpot, would you believe, starts off at... £5,500. <laughs> a truly terrifying amount of money. So, let's play Pointless. <laughs> now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And you have to be careful, because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. and you will score the maximum of 100 points. So try and avoid that happening. OK, guys, your first category this afternoon is... Hollywood actors. Now, that seems to go down pretty well. Can you decide in your pairs who's going first and who's going second? And can whoever's going first please step up to the podium? Right, let's find out what your first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many John Travolta films as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which John Travolta has received an acting credit. As always, we're not looking for short films, TV films, documentaries, things where he turns up as himself, but voice performances do count. There are 44 John Travolta films on this list and a great many of his films are pointless. Right, Ellis and Viv, you all drew lots before the show and today you get to go first. Viv, you happy with John Travolta? I'm very happy with John Travolta. I think he's a wonderful actor. However, as a firefighter, I would go for Lad of 49. What? You're a firefighter, Viv? He was. But not, you're not? <laughs> no. So I thought you said, as a firefighter, I, quite I would have to the, go... In the outfit, that was all. I see. OK, steady now. OK, right. <laughs> um, so you are going to go for? Ladder 49. Ladder 49. A good answer, I reckon. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ladder 49. <laughs> oh, I think it's going a long way down. <laughs> 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 
Well, that earned you the briefest shoulder massage I've ever seen from your son. <laughs> and it earned you only one point. Fantastic. Richard, ladder 49. Yes, very, very good answer. As you say, John Travolta plays a firefighter in the film with uh, Joachim Phoenix. So I'm sure if there's a ladder 50, uh, <laughs> can maybe get a part alongside oh, yes. him. Yes. I'll put, I'll put in a word. Thank you. Do that, Richard. Do yeah, that. Well. OK, Ollie, so we are looking for the most obscure John Travolta film you can think of. What's it going to be? Get Shorty. Get Shorty. OK, a good answer. Let's see how many people said Get Shorty. Down it goes. Oh, not bad at all. Eight. Get Shorty, Richard. Yeah, another very good answer. John Travolta plays a mob boss trying to get into the movies with Danny DeVito and Gene Hackman, Rene Russo. A very, very good film, if you haven't seen it. Thanks, Richard. Mark? I'm going to go with... Because I can't think of anything else, I'm going to go with Face Off. Face Off, a yeah. spectacularly good film. Let's see how many people said Face Off. <laughs> 37. <laughs> it's a good answer, but it's a high scorer. 37. Face Off, Richard. Yeah, from 1997, John Travolta yeah. plays a cop, Nicolas Cage plays a terrorist, and they swap faces. It's, yes. it's based on a true story. <laughs> As I say, a, a great film. Linda. Linda, do you know your films well? Quite well, yes. Do you know your John Travolta films well? I think so. Come on, then, let's find a pointless John Travolta film. I'm going to go for Michael, where he played an angel. Oh, you are going to try and find a pointless one. That's fantastic. Let's see how many people said it. Michael. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. There it goes. Well Good answer. That scores you eight. Richard, Michael. Yeah, Michael from 1997. He plays a, an unconventional angel. What's a matter of interest is a conventional angel. A conventional angel is a, is a real one. Yeah. You know, like an actual one. Yeah, you know, white, the, the white ones, robes. The ones that walk among us. <laughs> Wings, harps. Yeah, exactly. And they, the they, go, they, ones... they gather in hosts, don't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. A host of angels. <laughs> OK, very good. Brilliant. We're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Well, that's quite a broad scoreboard. Ellis and Viv looking fantastic there. Just one. Hasn't she done well? I know. I'm so proud. Oh, <laughs> she's, she's brilliant. She's brilliant. I know. John and Mark, 37 isn't a bad answer, but the pressure is now on John. <laughs> Luckily, I happen to know he's a massive fan of John Travolta, <laughs> so, uh, in fact, he, you were named after him, I think, weren't you? I wish. That's right, yes. Linda and Jane, Steve and Ollie, like as they lie on eight. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> so, Jane, we are looking for John Travolta films. I'm really hoping that I'm not going to underdo, undo Linda's good work. She said I could do anything, but just don't get 100 point answers. Okay. But the, I've only got one in my head, and it's... Well, that's helpful. Yes, it, it simplifies things. It does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'm going to say The Boy in the Glass Bubble. The Boy in the Glass Bubble. There is your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the next round. Let's see if The Boy in the Glass Bubble is a correct answer, and if it is, if it's maybe pointless. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, Let's Sorry. just remind ourselves what Linda said. Don't, what she said, the only thing is, don't... I can't remember, you just said, the only thing is, don't score <laughs> a, a hundred. It was something like that. It may yeah. not well, have been that, exactly it may have been what something else. Said. Oh, no, you haven't. You've done the opposite. Right, OK, well, you've scored a hundred, I'm afraid. That's an incorrect answer. Yeah, it's so easy to mix up don't and do, isn't it? Because they sound very similar. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. There was a TV film in 1976 called The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. So, wrong title, wrong. and it's a TV film, yeah. Unlucky. Worth, worth a go, Good, then. though. I mean, that's a very honourable... An honourable hundred. Thank you. That makes yeah. me feel much better. Well, no, it, you know, that's good. <laughs> it showed real expertise, insider Travolta knowledge. It was just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Yeah. John, are you, are you a film buff, John? Uh, not in the slightest. Do you like films? Do you, go, do you see films? Do you watch uh, I films? fall asleep during them. Can you remember maybe the first half of a John Travolta film? <laughs> I mean, and just maybe the first half of the title before, I can... you, before you just <laughs> clonked your head down on the... I only know three John Travolta films. One I don't know the name of. <laughs> one it's is... a kind of two. Yeah. <laughs> so one is, you know, probably a safer bet than the other. Yeah. And I've actually seen the one I'm going to give you, which is The Taking of Pelham 123. The Taking of Pelham... I, I, that's a fantastic answer. <laughs> OK, there's your red line. If you come below that red line, 
you're through to the next round. I have a good feeling about this. Let's see if it's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Good enough. Might be even better. Oh, look at that, John! A fantastic answer that scores you two, taking your total to 39. Richard? Released last year, 2009, a remake of the original, obviously, about an armed hijacker who hijacks a subway train. Right, Steve. Ollie did fantastically on the first pass. He scored eight. The high scorers are 100 points ahead of you. Jane and Linda there, 108 over there. You want to be scoring 99 or less with this, so... <laughs> relatively little pressure, comparatively. I can think of three, so I'm just going to play it safe, I think. Oh, fingers crossed. OK, well, here's fun. <laughs> I, like, I like these safe <laughs> answers. I'm going to go for Look Who's Talking. OK, Look Who's Talking, you're saying. You want to be scoring 99 or less. Look, there's the red line. It's just below the pink line there. I think you might be able to do this. Let's see what that scored you. <laughs> Done it. Wow, 18. <laughs> That scores you a surprisingly low 18 points. Look who's talking, Richard. Yeah, you'd have been gutted if that had got 100, wouldn't you? 100 oh, people you? had gone... I'll tell you the film I do remember. Look who's talking. <laughs> Bruce Willis uh, voices a baby and John Travolta plays a cab driver. It's about all you need to know about Look Who's Talking. Well, I tell you what, Ellis, the good news is this. You are through to the next round, come what may. The high scorers are Jane and Linda with 108. You have only one, thanks to Viv's excellent work in the first pass. So even if you score 100 points, you're still in the next round. I think you should go for a pointless here. Ellis, you've got, to, you've got to do even better than your mum. I am quite a big John Travolta fan. I, I think he's a bit of a handsome fellow, actually. So I think because I'm a bit of a disco man, I'm going to go for a film that he did called Staying Alive. Let's just see how many of our 100 people said Staying Alive. I don't know why I'm saying Stay In Alive. Staying Alive. Stay, no, Stay In Alive. Is it Stay In? Yeah. I do know why I'm saying Stay In Alive. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Stay In Alive. Well, you're through. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> well, that scored you only six. Do you know who wrote and directed Staying Alive? Someone really surprising, like... Um, Sylvester Stallone. Get out yeah. of here. Yeah. He wrote it. Yeah. And, and directed, directed it. it. He sure did. Wow. Yeah, how about that? How? about that. So, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid it's Linda and Jane. Should have listened to you. Bad. Yes, you, you should have. <laughs> should have. You, you should have. You scored eight with Michael. That was a, that was a wonderful answer. That's only going to make her more cross with me, to be honest. There were 19 pointless answers. I, I won't uh, take you through all of them. He had a cameo in Austin Powers in Gold Member, in the, the film within a film. Uh, he was in Primary Colours, the political thriller. The Thin Red Line, the, uh, the war movie he was in. Let's take a look at a few more. Civil Action, Mad City, Basic, well done if you've got any of these at home. Blowout, a very early uh, Brian De Palma film, Perfect, and The Experts. All of those would have been pointless answers, would have added £250 to the jackpot. Let's take a look at the worst answers you could possibly have given. Number three, I can't believe no one said Pulp Fiction when we've got two cast members standing right here. <laughs> <laughs> Literally all the way through, I was thinking Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction. That was the third worst answer. The second worst answer, Saturday Night Fever. And if you weren't going to say The Boy in the Glass Bubble, the worst thing you could have said was... Greece, which would have scored 80 points. OK, Linda and Jane, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless John Travolta knowledge you needed to get through to the next round. But remember, everyone gets two chances to appear on Pointless and make it through to the final. So we will see you next time for your final chance. But thanks so much for playing Pointless. Thank you. <laughs> for the remaining three pairs, though, it's time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of our teams, I'm afraid, is going to be sent home disappointed at the end of this round. You just have to make sure it's not you. OK, our category for the second round is... Sport. OK, decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second. Okay. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many boxing weights as they could. Richard? Yeah, the correct answers in this round are all official weight classes in male professional boxing. 
In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but you have to be very careful because at least one of those answers is also incorrect. Pick one of those and you will score the maximum of 100 points. The first set of seven answers are... Jumbo, Light Heavy, Super Bantam, Fly, Feather, Fly Heavy, Heavy. OK, Viv. We're looking for boxing weights. I think I'm going to go for a flyweight. Flyweight? Yes. We're looking for the most obscure boxing weights. Viv is saying flyweights. Let's see how many of our 100 people said flyweight. <laughs> Not a bad score. Flyweight gets you 14. Flyweight, Richard. Yeah, flyweight. You've got to be eight stone or less to be a flyweight boxer. That's, that's very light, isn't it? Yeah, although, although very, very heavy for a fly. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> and that'd be just terrifying. A fly, an eight oh, stone fly? It would fly? be absolutely horrifying. Oh. OK, remember, there is at least one pointless answer in there. There is also at least one incorrect answer, Ollie. Ollie, you strike me as somebody who knows his boxing. I do follow a bit of boxing. Amir Khan, I would watch. When it came up, I thought Bantam. I don't know if there's Super Bantam. I know there's definitely Bantam. So I'm going to go with Super Bantam. You're going to take a punt. You're I gambling am. here. I am, yeah. You're treading out into the unknown on Super Bantam, which could pay off in spades. It could be fantastic, or it could be catastrophically wrong. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's see how many people said Super Bantam, and if it is a correct answer. It is correct. It could go a long way down, this one, I think. And it does! Well done. That's a pointless answer, and it adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £5,750. That scores you nothing. Richard? Yeah, great answer. Super bantamweight, occasionally known as junior featherweight as well. But Super Bantamweight is its official name. Very good, Ollie. A good punt. John? Unfortunately, Ollie took the answer I was going to give. Um, oh, dear. Well, remember, there could, know, there could be another point to Absolutely. Answer, I'm reasonably confident of uh, Featherweight. Feather. You're going to go with Featherweight? Yeah. We are looking for Boxing Weights. John is saying Featherweight. Let's see what that scored you. Forty-six. That's a high score there, John. Forty-six for featherweight. Richard. Yeah, there's been a, a number of very famous featherweights: Barry McGuigan, Nassim Hamed. They were both featherweights, so I think it's in people's consciousness. Well, heavyweight obviously is a weight. David Hay is our current world champion in that. Light heavy is also a weight. Joe Calzaghe moved up to to light heavy, and both the other two are incorrect answers. Jumbo and fly heavy were both have scored one hundred points. So, well done for avoiding those. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scoreboard. Ah, it's quite a broad field we have there. Steve and Ollie, fantastic on nothing there. Lovely, pointless answer from Ollie. John, oh, dear, featherweight was just a, was an expensive answer there. It was correct. 46 you are on. So, Mark, when it comes to your turn, you're going to have to try and score as low as you possibly can. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for boxing weights. I'm going to put seven more answers on the board. Here they are. Cruiser, light, needle, straw, welter, middle, iron. And again, I can tell you that there's at least one pointless answer in there and at least one incorrect answer. So you've got to try and avoid those incorrect ones. OK. How good is your boxing <laughs> record, Mark? Well, I actually share an office with a chap who was an English amateur boxing champion. Does, does he talk about his, his pugilist he, days? Uh, he basically bores me senseless <laughs> about boxing, so I normally fall asleep. I'm going to take a bit of a risk. I think a lot of people might say this, but then again, hopefully they might not. I'm going to go with cruiserweight. Cruiserweight. There it is at the top of the board. You're saying cruiserweight. You have to try and score as little as you can with this, Mark. Let's see how many of our 100 people said cruiserweight. Not 
are bad. Cruiserweight scores you seven, which takes your total to 53. Cruiserweight, Richard. Yeah, cruiserweight, well done. It's uh, sort of just under heavy. David Hay, the world heavyweight champion, used to be world cruiserweight champion as well. Now, remember, Steve, there is at least one pointless answer in there. See if you can truffle it out. But I be careful, wanna... though, because there is also at least one incorrect answer. I don't want to undo all, all his hard work, so I'm going to go for welterweight. Welterweight. There it is, welterweight, you're saying. You are currently on nothing. The high scorers are Mark and John on 53. There's your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the next round. Let's see what that scored you. It's good enough. Good luck. Not bad at all. That scores you 17, taking your total to 17. Welterweight, Richard. Welterweight, sort of ten and a half stone. I think probably Sugar Ray Robinson, the most famous welterweight of all time. Now, Ellis. <clears throat> Ellis, you good on boxing? I actually do box, but, but not professionally. I enjoy it just to, just to keep fit and stuff. What do you think? Well, I mean, the, the answer I was going to go for was, was welter. I, I, I mean, it's a weight that I am familiar with. I do know lightweight, and I'm sure there's a middleweight as well. You know what? Came from nothing. Let's just take a complete guess. I'm going to say iron weight. Iron weight. There's your red line. You want to be scoring 38 or less with this. You're going to say iron weight. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, how many people said it? Iron weight. Bad luck. Unfortunately, iron weight is a wrong answer which means you score the maximum of 100 points. That's your total, 114. Richard? Yeah, unlucky. No, no such weight as iron weight, but let's take a look at the others, see what you could have said, see what would have got you through. If you said lightweight, it would have scored you 55 points, yeah. you'd still be out. Mm. If you'd said middleweight, it would have scored you 36, and you would have gone through to the next round. Of the two that's left, one of those is the weight with a limit of 7.5 stone. And that weight is straw weight. Mm. Well done if you said that at home, and that would have added £250 to the jackpot. Needle weight, again, is made up. It's an incorrect answer. It would have scored 100 points. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, it's Ellis and Viv. Did you think that was a good category, the boxing one? Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we know who David Hayes is and some of the other boxers. Yeah. And, you know, occasionally, because I, you know, I do enjoy boxing, I watch some of the boxing matches. So, so yeah, it wasn't a bad, a bad subject for us, but... Uh... Bad luck. Well, you know, you, you went out for the right reasons. You were trying to see if you could find a pointless answer. Ellis and Viv, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless boxing knowledge you needed to win, so I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you, but you have been fantastic contestants, so uh, thanks very much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to hot up even more now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So, well done, Steve and Ollie, John and Mark. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £5,750. <laughs> now, you're going head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. OK? Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many presidents of France as they could. Presidents of France, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any president of the Fifth Republic. That's any president of France since 1958. Elected presidents only. Uh, we won't accept interim or acting presidents. There are six possible answers in, the, in this round. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Steve and Ollie, because you've played the best throughout the show, you get to go first. Ollie, you, you, you weren't looking as confident as I've seen you no. with that. Guessing not a strong subject. I can think of two. Well, that's not bad. There are only six. Yeah. We are both hopeless, so we're going to go for the obvious one, which is President Mitterrand. Mitterrand, you're going to say. John and Mark? Uh, there was uh, uh, Giscard d'Estaing. Yes. Uh, Pompidou? Yes, he was president, wasn't he? Yeah. And then he back to... Yeah, I think him. Pompidou sounds like one most, people yeah. might have forgot. Yeah. Forgotten. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation, being a northern Yorkshire oik, but uh, I think it's Pompidou. Pompidou. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You're going to go with Pompidou. OK. Steve and Ollie are going to say François Mitterrand. And we will see how many of our 100 people said Mitterrand. Oh, <laughs> 
scores you 41. John and Mark have said Georges Pompidou. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Pompidou. It's good enough. Wow. Oh. Eight. So, after the first question, the score is 1-0 to John and Mark. Richard. Yeah, it's George Pompidou, brilliant answer. It's the best answer you could have given. He was president from 1969 to 1974. Had a centre named after him. The Pompidou Centre. Oh, that one? Yeah, exactly. Uh, there were six presidents. I know some people would have got all six of these at home, so let's take a look. Pompidou at the bottom there, then uh, Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, which I think you also mentioned. Jacques Chirac. Mitterrand, and right at the top, Nicolas Sarkozy, just beaten by the first president of the Fifth Republic, Charles de Gaulle. Right, here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many wives of Ian Beale as they could. <laughs> the four wives or ex-wives of Ian Beale in EastEnders, we need the first name of any of them. Right, this time it's John and Mark to answer first. We're really struggling here, as you can tell. I don't uh, watch it at all. It's, um, Sandy. Sandy Beale. Steve and Ollie. I'm sure there was one called Ruth. Something like that. Go for it. No, no. I'm going to... I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm not going to go, go for one, a safe sure one. Of. I think it's Cindy. Cindy. That's what I meant. We've got Sandy and Cindy. John and Mark, you have said Sandy. Let's see if that's a correct answer, and if it is, how many of our 100 people said it? Sandy. No. No. I'm afraid, as you suspected, that is an incorrect answer. Steve and Ollie have gone with Cindy. OK, well, let's see if Cindy's a correct answer. And if it is, how many of our 100 people said it? It's right. Very good. 64. That's good enough for Ollie and Steve to win it. Ian Beale. Ian Beale, he's a mild mannered local businessman, but he's had quite a life. Let's take a look at his four wives. There's Mel, who left him at the stroke of midnight on his wedding day. There's Laura, who died falling downstairs. We've already had Cindy, who not only hired a hitman to try and kill him, but then uh, also died. And Jane, his most recent wife. Very best of luck, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so after our second question, it is one all. Very, very exciting indeed. You are like as you lie. Here is the third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words of the acronym UNICEF as they could. Richard UNICEF. Yeah, we're looking for any of the six words that make up the original official name of the acronym UNICEF. OK. And it is Steve and Ollie to go first this time. Yeah. yeah. We're going to go for children's. For the children's. C. Yeah. OK, for the C, children's, you are saying. John and Mark. I think it stands for United Nations International Children's Educational Fund. I think. Um, oh, I ought so to know we, better. We need an obscure... Yeah, um, United and Nations are, are not going to be any good because everybody will know those. Children's it's international is, is fairly obvious. We've got to go for the E or the F. And probably... Do you want to go for fund, fund. or education? Should we go for it? Yeah. Which fund? Fund. Yeah. We're going to risk fund. We're going to, we're going to risk fund. You're going to risk fund. OK, you're going with fund. Steve and Ollie have gone with children's, so let's see how many of our 100 people said children's. <laughs> 35. <laughs> 35. John and Mark were risking fund. Let's see if fund is correct, and if it is correct, let's see how many of our 100 said it. It's correct. Correct. Is it good enough? Is it good enough? Yes, it is. Oh, hold on. Oh, well done. So, after the third question, it is 2-1 to John and Mark. Richard. Yeah, well played. You very nearly talked to yourself out of a point there. What were you going to go for? Educational, but it's not, is it? It's not. It's the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. Let's take a look at how those would have scored. Uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, emergency is actually the lowest score of all. It was six, then fund was the next best you could have done, and then children's, international, and United and Nations, obviously, are way out in front. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Now, obviously, John and Mark, you only have to score one more, and you are through to the final. So, Steve and Ollie, you've really got to concentrate and try and... Get this one yourselves. Here's the fourth 
question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of Spandau Ballet as they could. <laughs> Members of Spandau Ballet. Richard, I can see the disgust on John and Mark's faces. Yeah, we're looking for uh, any of the five original members of uh, Spandau Ballet recently reformed. We're very lucky to have two of them with us. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this time it's John and Mark's turn to go first. We are looking for members of Spandau Ballet. First names and surnames. OK, well, neither of us are big fans, and I certainly never had the hair to be a fan of Spandau Ballet, so... Uh... You, you one needed a lot. <laughs> an awful lot. Going to go for Martin Kemp. You're going to go for Martin Kemp. Well, no, most members of Spandau Ballet are going to do French presidents, so we're on a winner there. <laughs> um, I only know three of them. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go for uh, Gary Kemp. You're going Gary Kemp. OK. John and Mark are going with Martin Kemp. So let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Martin Kemp. <laughs> Thirty-seven for Martin. Kemp. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Ollie, thirty-seven for Martin. You think Gary's lower than that? Mm, we're not it's close. Confident. It's close. You have to win this, otherwise John and Mark are through to the final and playing for that massive jackpot. Okay, let's see how many of our one hundred people said Gary Kemp. <laughs> Just. <laughs> oh, very exciting indeed. So after the fourth question, it is two all. You are absolutely even. Richard. Very, very good answer. There were five answers there, and a, a number of people of a certain age will be screaming all five of them at the TV. Let's take a look. As always, it's going to be the drummer. John Keeble would have scored you five points. Steve Norman plays saxophone, also plays a bit of guitar. Tony Hadley would have only got you 26. And then the Kemp brothers right up the top. Gary and Martin Kemp. This is the fifth and final, the deciding question. You are two all. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and has a crack at that tonight. jackpot of £5,750. OK, here's the fifth question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries beginning with L as they could. Richard? Yeah, there are nine countries in the world beginning with L. We're looking for the most obscure. As always, by countries, we mean sovereign states, uh, which are members of the UN. While they're conferring, see if you can get all nine of them. This time, again, it is Steve and Ollie to start. <laughs> We're looking for countries beginning with L. Which ones? Yeah, for us. Which one? Which one is Tristan. Tristan. Come on, then. Liechtenstein. 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 And John and Mark, what are you going to say? What about Lesotho? The one down in South in, Africa. Oh, yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah it's, in the, it's in the Commonwealth. That's right, it's in the Commonwealth. So you've got Lesotho, you've got Luxembourg, Libya. I think Lesotho, not many people know no, about Lesotho. I have so. we'll, oh, so we're we're, we're going to go with Lesotho. 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 Oh dear, yeah. Stephen Ollie didn't want to hear that. Right, well, in the order they were given, Stephen Ollie have said Liechtenstein. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. <laughs> Thirty-four. Yeah. What are you thinking, Stephen Oli? Lesotho? I think it's a province in South Africa, and I think they're going to absolutely hammer us, and we're going to be humiliated. <laughs> so can we get on with it, please? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Lesotho. Down it goes. Yes, I'm afraid. 17. <laughs> so at the end of our fifth and final question, John and Mark are through to the final 3 2. Bad luck, guys. Stephen Ollie, Richard. Uh, yeah, Lesotho, great answer. It's the best answer you, you possibly could have given. It's the best score. It's, it couldn't be beaten. Let's take a look at all nine of the countries beginning with L. Lesotho down there, Laos, Asia, Liberia in West Africa, Liechtenstein. Uh, we've had from the guys, Libya would have scored 40 points. Four more, Lebanon, 41, Latvia, 50, Luxembourg, 52, and top of the pile, Lithuania, 56. Thanks, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Stephen Ollie. Bad luck, guys. That was... Uh, I think you saw the writing on the wall there, didn't you? Mm, Lesotho. 
No, that was a cracking answer. Yeah. Very good. Stephen, Ollie, you've come so close, you made it all the way to the head-to-head, -head, but you've just wasted one of your chances to reach the pointless final. Luckily, though, you get two shots at it, so we'll see you again next time. Thanks very much. Great contestants. Thank you. <laughs> but for John and Mark, it's time for our pointless final and the chance to win £5,750. Well, congratulations, John and Mark. You've beaten off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. Now, though, you have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an impressive £5,750. <laughs> Very good. The rules are simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one could think of. Now, we've had one pointless answer on the show today. You just have to find another one now. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. You can go for Asterix, American Football or Rock Legends. Asterix, American Football or Rock Legends. Right. Well, well, Asterix was the goal, was. wasn't he? And that's about as far as I'm <laughs> That's as far as I go with Asterix. <laughs> American Football, obviously, Super Bowl type stuff where you've yeah. got, you know, the, the various names of teams or towns they belong to. Absolutely. Yep. Rock Legends is so big, I mean... It could again, be anything, it could be it? anything. But it's probably the one that we know more on, is it? Um, I'm not the best on pop music, but it, if it's a rock legend, then you'd like to think that it was somebody that we would know. So should uh, we, we try, try, go rock legends, we try rock legends? Rock legends. We'll try rock, rock legends. legends it is. OK, very good process of elimination there. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Rolling Stones singles as they could. OK, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any single released by the Rolling Stones that's reached the UK top 40. Collaborations with other artists do count, but any solo hits by any of the members of the group don't count. There are 43 possible answers. The Rolling Stones have had 43 top 40 hits. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £5,750 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Right. OK, what, what have you got? got? Um, I mean, the, all the ones I know are the, are the more famous ones, you know, Honky Tonk Women and things yeah. like that. Okay. I, do you know any sort of... I can think of Start Me Up, which was about 1981-ish. Right. Um, I'm starting to struggle after that. That's the only, only Rolling Stones album I've got and I've not played it for the best part of 30 years. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hit single. Is it a hit single we won? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. yeah. So Start Me Up was definitely a single. Right. Um, I mean, I think all the early stuff is so well known that... Yeah, that's true, yeah. But what are the num we, we need three, so what, what else have we oh got? God, Start me up. Um, uh, brown sugar. Yeah. Honky tonk woman. I mean, if you're fairly confident that something like that is not going to, you know, the other two, if, I, I don't think we can get it's any well, others. It's well known to me whether it's pointless or not, I don't know. But yeah. Well, <laughs> Let, we've got ten seconds, so should we give a couple of ones that we know, but yeah, we're not going to get them. see where we get with those. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to give them then as you? Uh, OK, what, so you've, uh, on? Yep. you've arrived at your three answers. Yep, you have. OK, what are they? We're going to go with brown sugar. Brown sugar. sugar. Brown sugar. Uh, Honky tonk, tonk woman. woman. Honky tonk woman. And start me up. And start me up. Which of those do you have the most faith in being pointless? Start me up. Start yeah. me up. Possibly. Which is the one you probably have the least faith in? Honky tonk, Honky -tonk woman. Honky tonk woman. <laughs> OK, well, let's put them up on the board in that order. Honky tonk woman. Brown sugar. And start me up. Okay, we are looking for Rolling Stone singles. In order to win that jackpot of five thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds, one of these answers has to be pointless. Has to be an answer that none of our one hundred people gave. Okay, the first answer we're going to put up is the one you had the least faith in, and that was Honky Tonk Woman. So let's put that to our one hundred people and see how many of them said Honky Tonk Woman. This for five thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds. Yes. Well, down it goes. Wow. Oh. Not bad. <laughs> oh, Not a bad answer. Look at that. Eleven points. Only eleven people knew Honky Tonk Woman. This was the answer yeah. you had least confidence in. Yeah. Maybe not now. <laughs> oh, let's try the next one. This is great. Brown sugar is your next answer. This has to be a pointless answer. 
for you to win that jackpot of £5,750. Let's hope none of our 100 people said brown sugar. We're looking for Rolling Stones singles. This is your second shot at the jackpot of £5,750. Oh! oh. 26. Oh, that was a bit more like what you were expecting yeah, that, last yeah, time yeah, round, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even so, actually, even 26 is pretty, pretty low, pretty low. Mm. This is your last answer. You are saying, start me up. This is the answer you've had the most faith in, being pointless. You confident? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. We haven't come up with a pointless answer all, our, you know, all afternoon. So, well, you never know. Let's see how many of our 100 people said "start me up." This has to be a pointless answer for you to win that jackpot. Down it goes. This is your third and final shot at the jackpot of five thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds. Down it goes. Gone down lower. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important, pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £5,750, which rolls over to the next show, but you've been amazing contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. Well <laughs> Weird. I can't quite read what those 100 people knew and what they didn't from that. Yeah. It's a problem, yeah. isn't it, you know? Yeah. Everybody knows something that others don't. And... Yeah. Well, you know, you had a good spread. You had a good spread. There was a nice logic to that. You say la vie. Stuff? Yeah, well, say la vie. Are you thinking of lots of, uh, lots of other Stone songs now? No, none at all. Not enough. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't think of anything. Richard, what should they have said? Well, Brown Sugar was actually is the second most well-known Rolling Stones track, surprisingly, uh, just behind Satisfaction. That would have yeah. been the worst answer of all. But there were any number of pointless answers, a few obscure ones, a few uh, a little better known. Love is Strong, might have got that was pointless. Streets of Love, Respectable was a pointless answer. Nobody gave that. Let's look at a few more. Uh, anyone, anybody seen My Baby? Don't Stop, I Go Wild. Rain Fall Down, Out of Tears, she so, These are all Rolling Stones singles, believe it or not. She's So Cold, they're all top 40 hits. You Got Me Rockin', Say To Me, Going To A Go-Go, I think, perhaps yeah, was the, the best the answer we point us there, yeah. OK, well, thanks, Richard. Unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to John and Mark. You've been fantastic contestants. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over again, which means the next show we will be playing for £6,750. <laughs> Join us next time and see if someone can win it on Pointless. But meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>